Let the meltdown begin. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. So we got a great show lined up for you guys tonight. There's no UFC action this week, but we're going to break it down Bellator style. As a friend of the program, Michael Venom Page is throwing it down against Nashawn Burrell. Very, very intriguing fight as Michael Page continues to climb uh, the ladder in the rankings in Bellator. Dude's an explosive fighter. We're going to break it down with Joey Odessa. We'll take a look at the Dantes Joe Warren tilt as well. We'll recap what uh, went down. We had a UFC double header as Rory McDonald proves that he is ready for prime time. Gunnar Nelson, uh, not quite uh, ready yet. Put him back in there. Rick Story dominates and cashes as a monster underdog. Uh, but uh, we're shaking things up a little bit. We've got, uh, you know, we have fighters on from uh, every different uh, fight league, but this is my bad. We haven't had anybody on from Invicta before. So we're going to show some Invicta love today uh, on the program. And uh, I'm really excited to welcome uh, Charmaine Tweet uh, to the program. Coming off a successful TKO win on September the 6th. Charmaine, thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. How you doing? Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. I had no idea I was the first Invicta fighter on here. That's awesome. Yeah, that's my bad. I'm almost embarrassed uh, to, to admit <laughs> that uh, right now. We've had, uh, we've had female fighters on the program uh, before, but I guess technically our, our first Invicta uh, fighter. So congratulations on your win on September the 6th uh, against uh, Roth and Hausler. And I guess after you, know, you had four straight wins in which you were choking people out, you know, is it is it cooler? Is it more satisfying when you knock somebody out after or when you submit them? You know, I, I, I tend to like to submit people. I don't know if it's if it's me showing mercy or what the deal is, but I'll be honest, with Veronica, it felt very, very satisfying to <laughs> knock her out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to ask you about that because I know there was some bad blood uh, going into that. And I remember asking a, uh, I asked a, somebody that was in the Ultimate Fighter house uh, with the women, and I said to them, I said, it seems like you guys got along and there was good teamwork. And she's like, yeah, on TV. She goes, in reality, I hate them. And she goes, we all hated each other. And it seems like, you know, there's a pattern here. You know, you had a problem with Rousey. You know, it's your first fight. And somehow you, you're having a problem with Rousey before. You had a problem with Veronica right now. Is this a pattern with just you? Or are women sort of even just more nastier to each other than the men are? You know, I, I think it all depends on the situation. Like... You know, somebody once said, oh, ask the fan of mine, why does Charmaine hate for, or hate uh, hate Rhonda so much? Is it because she lost to her? And I'm like, well, no, I've lost to to four other people, and I don't hate them. <laughs> you know, I, I just it was the situation with Rhonda that, that caused me not to particularly like her, and then it was the situation with Veronica. Normally, I'm, I get along with just about everybody. I mean, Amanda Bell, we went out for a beer and poutine afterwards. So, you know, I, I don't hate all my opponents. Um I'm there to beat them. I'm not necessarily there to be their friend before we fight, but you know, afterwards, whatever. You know, if if, if you know things go well in the time leading up to the fight, and there's no major issues between us, then yeah, you know. And even if there is, sometimes you can go out and you know still get along with them afterwards. It's just the particular situation with with Veronica and with with Rhonda. No, I got to tell you, I'm becoming a bigger fan every moment of yours, Charmaine. You know, you're already a fighter. Beers and poutine. You know, that's that, you know, that that's that's a complete night for me right there. Fighting, <laughs> beers, and poutine. That's some great stuff. So you know, you came in and Ronda Rousey was your first fight. Do you think that maybe people underestimate you a little bit because they look at your MMA record and they don't realize your championship kickboxing pedigree as uh, Charmaine was a championship, uh, world championship kickbox, and they don't really realize your pedigree and your experience and the fact that you you threw yourself right into the fire. You, you didn't hold back. A lot of people could have babied themselves getting into MMA. You didn't. You threw yourself right in there. Do you think people might underestimate you a little bit now that don't know your background? Oh, completely. I mean, I definitely think that uh, Veronica did, for sure. Like, you know, I got knocked out early in my career as well. Um, and it may, basically it was because I did just throw myself into the fire. I had one amateur MMA fight that lasted a total of 30 seconds. And, you know, I wasn't used to getting smashed upside the face with those little gloves yet. And, and she thought, oh, yeah, you know what? Charmaine's been knocked out once. She's got a weak chin. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm the, I believe she said the young lion was going to take the old lion down. And I was like, oh, honey, no, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the old lion isn't going down without a fight, that's for sure. And, yeah, so I think because of my a little bit rocky start to MMA, it was, it was a hard transition for me. I was coming off of a really high kickboxing career and, 
you know, I thought, hey, I'm pretty good at this. And surprise, it's a whole other world. And the, these few losses that I've had have been, you know, showing me what I need to learn in order to conquer this new world. And, yeah, you know, four losses, whatever. Uh, look at that as you will. Look at the people I've lost to. Exactly. You and, know, you they're know, not chumps, so... And a lot of fighters, and a lot of fighters too, will get down on themselves. But kickboxing, nobody goes undefeated, right? So, I guess you know you can almost you know deal with. All right, I'm losing, but uh, I'm definitely going to get better. What was the biggest? What was the biggest difficulty or transition? Was it the size gloves? Was it the different uh, gloves? What was the biggest difference? You know, the fact you know of the wrestling angle. What was the the most difficult part and uh, challenging part? Uh, I should ask of the transition for you. Um, I would say. <laughs> A little bit of everything, right? Like the different size gloves. You're not being hit with big old pillow hands anymore, 10-ounce gloves. You know, they're small. And it took a little bit of time to get used to the, the shock factor of basically being hit with a bare fist. I mean, there's not a whole lot there. And then the wrestling. I mean, it's a, I always tell people it's a long way down for me to hit the canvas. Yeah, exactly. It's a tall, yeah, you're six feet, right? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, without a doubt. So, you know, you fight, you know, you fight at 145, but you fought in as high as, you know, 160 in, in kickboxing. You know, the glamour division of women's fighting right now is, you know, in the UFC at one, 135. And, you know, Invicta's doing some great things. There's all the talk about, oh, a cyborg should go to 135, 135. But I've spoken to people and they've told me that, you know, women cutting weight's not the same as men. It's more dangerous to their health. There's, there's a lot of factors that go into place that people don't really realize. You've had to do it before. As I stated, you know, you're, you're saying, no, man, you know, 145, is, it is what it is. How, how much more difficult is it uh, for a, a women from a physical standpoint to cut weight? I think it's a lot more difficult. I mean... You don't see it. I mean, you see some 40-pound weight cuts with guys, right? And, and I've done 35. I've done a 35-pound weight cut, but it's taken, you know, the six weeks leading up to the fight. I do it very slowly. Um, but it, it's tough on us. It's hard on our systems. I mean, there's permanent damage that we can be doing to our, our liver and our kidneys. And you know what? Not just women. I don't, I don't agree with weight cutting for men either. Um, I kind of take a Joe Rogan stand on it, and it's, it's kind of cheating, really. I mean, if my opponent is walking around closer to 135 and I've been walking at 175 and I cut 30 pounds just to, to make weight that day of the fight, well, I'm coming in bigger and heavier than you. And uh, basically, I look at that as picking on somebody, you know, me picking on the smaller person on the playground. And I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. I do it because I have to. Um, my last fight, I didn't have to as much. Invicta did bring in the 155 pound weight division uh we're still developing it so there's not as many fighters in there so i will be fighting at 45 still um you know I, but what i'm doing is working on getting my weight really close to 155 naturally and then just doing a really quick little water cut before before i fight at 45 again and uh you know just what can i say weight cutting is not my favorite thing i don't think it's anybody's <laughs> favorite thing but i don't think it's necessary I think you see, you'll see stronger fights if people fight heavier. I really do. Fight closer to their natural weight, you're going to see stronger fights. So where, where do you see yourself uh, in the bigger picture, in the bigger Invicta picture? And, you know, Shannon Aff has to be a godsend, uh, isn't she, you know, for, for doing what she's done, for putting her money out there on the line. And people are just eating it up. Uh, you know, Invicta, you know, Twitter is ablaze. Whenever there's an Invicta card, diehard fans are, are eating this uh, stuff up. Where do you see yourself uh, in a bigger Invicta picture? Uh, I see myself, well, I have, I have pretty big aspirations. I see myself, you know, with a 145-pound championship and a 155-pound championship. So you're gunning for two, not one, but two. So you have big goals here, huh? I do, I do. And, you know, as Veronica so nicely pointed out on Twitter, I am getting older. Um, <laughs> I am getting older, so I have limited years to do this. So I don't know how many limited. My body's been treating me fairly well. So I anticipate to be in here for a few more years for sure. But, yeah, big goals. Two, two uh two championships within a few years here hopefully we only have a couple of minutes left uh, i've really enjoyed there's this ton of stuff i want to get to you with here but you know you 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 were living uh, you know in milwaukee you were you were an instructor you were training uh, with duke rufus is it tough being in saskatchewan and no disrespect to, to any fighters there or, or any gyms etc but 
Is it tough to find people on your, your level? Can, can you find the competitive edge that you need to? You know, I have great coaches. Let's put, it up, put that out there right away. My coaches are amazing. But, yeah, the bodies are lacking. You know, finding, finding training partners is difficult. There's just, let's face it, there's just not as many people in Regina, Saskatchewan as there are in, say, California, right? Yeah. Like, you got tons of gyms to train at down there, tons, tons of people to train with. Um, I'm hard-pressed to find women, even let alone men, too, to fight, to train with. I mean, I'm the only competitive professional. Yeah, I would almost assume. Right now, so. That's what yeah. I was thinking, that you would probably, you know, you would have to train with almost men exclusively. So we only got like a minute left here, but I wanted to ask you, uh, you work at a bank. Um, and, you know, I joked uh, with, uh, with your husband manager. I said, man, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to rob that bank, you know, like. <laughs> And I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of banks. I'll admit, this is the first thing. You know, I'm not a huge fan of banks. Um, and I've gotten into it with tellers before. But I wouldn't want to get into it with you, uh, you know, if, if I was in the bank or if I had a problem uh, speaking to you in the bank. Uh, have you any crazy bank stories at all? I know you're kind of in an area where there's a lot of hunters and stuff. So, you know, people are walking around with rifles and stuff. It's almost commonplace, right? Do you have any crazy bank stories for us on the way out here? You know, just last week, I, I had to call Cord and say, you know what, only in the small town that I live in would this happen. I had a member come in with a six-inch hunting knife hanging off his belt. I was <laughs> like, really? Would you do this in Regina? I don't think so. Hey, you know what, I tell you, if he does this in Toronto, he's getting shot. Like, they're yeah. calling the cops, and they're like, all right, put your hands up. So were you thinking, all right, I'm going to have to choke this guy out maybe? <laughs> You know, I know all my members. Yeah. They, they all know me, so they I guess they know it's okay to do that in this town. But, you know, any, anywhere else, in there, yeah, it would have been a problem. <laughs> uh, Charmaine uh, tweet uh, with us. You can follow her on uh, Twitter at NotSoSweet. Uh, and, uh, you know, find her uh, online. Hey, Charmaine, it was great having you on the program. We'll definitely uh, do it again when, uh, when you got a fight uh, lined up. Uh, we'll definitely get you back on the show and talk about this. I really enjoyed having you on the show. We wish you nothing but the best of success. Thank you. It was, it was great having. Thank you for having me on. Is basically what I'm trying to, to get out of my mouth here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the time, Charmaine. No problem. There's a Charmaine a tweet with us. All right, uh, I enjoyed that. We go from a Charmaine tweet uh, outside of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. We send it to San Jose, Costa Rica. When we come back. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network continues. <laughs>